It's a two-rider duel for the 450 championship. 29-year-old Yamaha veteran Eli Tomac. 22-year-old Honda star Chase Sexton. Who will take the momentum from round 10 at Bud's Creek? 450 Moto 2 is next. This is a pivotal race in this championship. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, the Geico Motorcycle, Bud's Creek National. Round 10, all sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. It is our final race of the day. Four straight hours of coverage on MAV TV. 450 class, every point is going to count. And a big first moto earlier, we'll show you the highlights. Jason Wygant and James Stewart to take you through it. And we were waiting for that pivotal moment, and we got it in Moto1, and Eli Tomac started it. James, he was super aggressive early. Yeah, Eli didn't get the jump off the gate, but boy, did he make up the time on the first few corners, and he got around Chase. And in this podium interview, he said that, and I think that's what caused this thing to happen. And from that point on, Chase was, he was digging himself out of a hole. And it gets worse. Sexton coming through, Ryder crashes, watch the right side. Sexton, two front flips. So your series points leader is way, way back while his championship rival is up front. Yeah, it was a big move for uh, Sexton to have that happen because he hasn't had any of that type of diversity all year long. So, you know, Eli, once he made that, made that pass on Chase, I think he calmed down and jumped all over Ken and he just rode the race out. Jason Anderson, a nice charge through. Here he is getting Ryan Dungey for the number three position. And then he would put more heat on Roxon. This is for second. It felt like the El Hambre. He was back in action today, and everybody knew it. They were moving out of his way. You could tell when the guy's coming up, and Rockton did a good job at holding off on Dungy to, to get on that last podium spot, but, you know, this was the man of the day, Mr. Tomac. Oh, he needed to respond, and he absolutely did. Passes Sexton early. Sexton goes down twice, and Tomac wins. Sexton finishes seventh. Tomac takes the points lead, but we still have another 30-minute and two-lap race to go. These are the results from that first moto a little over an hour ago. Savachi and Plessinger rounding out the top 10. This field is thick. Let's send it down to Jason Thomas. Now for the last few weeks, this series has really heated up and we were wondering who would flinch first, who would make that pivotal mistake. And it looked like it was Chase Sexton that first time out now. He lost a bunch of points. He can't panic here though. He's got to find a way to regroup and win Moto2 to minimize the damage. A lot of pressure on those shoulders right there. Can Chase Sexton, now he still has the red plates because he was the point leader coming into today. Can he get some of those points back? Or is today going to be the day that Eli Tomac puts his stamp on 2022 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross? ET3 looking to be number one at Bud's. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Got the GoPro on Pierce Brown, giving you a little tour of what it's like to ride at Bucks Creek. Always great for the national, but also a very popular track for the locals to ride and race on. So thanks to GoPro for that course preview. And when you come here, you might want to swing by the nation's capital, just about an hour north of Bud's Creek. That is the Vietnam Memorial. So many great historic things to see when you visit Washington, D.C. And that includes Geico getting on board to help our nation in the military appreciation area. It's a great VIP spot where every year veterans get to come in. We salute their service to the country and try to repay them by giving them a grade A place to watch the races from. Let's get a little more info on this. Jason Thomas was able to head over there earlier today. We are at the Geico Military Appreciation Event, and I am here with retired Lieutenant Colonel Quentin Burrell. Now, for one, it's an honor to meet you, and I want to thank you for your service, but it's so awesome to have all these people here. And, and more interestingly, tell us about your history and your passion for the sport of motocross. Yes, sir. I, I grew up in, the, in, in uh, New Jersey, South Jersey, back in the 70s and started racing motocross, and uh, it's just something that I've been very passionate about. My my dad uh, was, a, was not a big supporter of motocross, but it is something that I continue to do my son's uh, race and 
And so we just continue uh, to support the motocross. We, we love the venue here. It's a great opportunity um, that GEICO sponsors this event, and, and it allows veterans from the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area to come out and just enjoy the sport of motocross. The sport of motocross. And so we appreciate all you do, and uh, this is a great venue, and we thank you so much. We really enjoy it. Well, I've got to spend the last few minutes over here and just the men and women in service over here really enjoying the day here at Butts Creek. And that's what it's all about. That's my neck of the woods, South Jersey, riding the sand pits down there. Good times. Okay, we're going to show you our MX versus ATV Legends track map, but James, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to use the drone and get a little live view of how this track has changed throughout the day. So James Stewart, tell us what you're seeing right here. Well, I see a lot of ruts and bumps, and I'm glad I'm where I'm at right now. But okay. these riders, <laughs> the track's definitely broken down compared to the normal part of the track. And as you see right now, I think they're going to be able to be aggressive. It doesn't look like there's too much water down on the track, so I think these guys are going to, to just jump on it and go out for it. So track's going to be the roughest it has all year, I mean all week. And it's hot, humid. Everybody's ready to see what happened and see if we can bounce back from the first moto from Chase Sexton. Yeah, what you're talking about is these first motos we saw today was very wet and slippery, but this is actually prime right now. Oh man, this is this is actually perfect dirt because it's not it's not too dry. It's in that medium part, and the biggest thing for all these riders, it's predictable, and that's why I think he's going to allow to see what happens and, and see if we can make some passes on early. Okay. Give me the uh, KTM keys to the moto. James Stewart, what do we need to do here in the 450 division? Well, the biggest thing is, just like earlier, just don't override the turns. You know, uh, these turns got big hooks in them. They've actually been getting deeper and deeper all day long. So you got to try not to override that. And then if I'm Eli Tomac, Chase Sexton, I'm giving one of each other the business. And this first moto, Eli gave him the business. And let's see if Chase can return the favor. FMF Privateer Power Award, Freddie Noren on the BBMX KTM, real strong, hovering around that top 10 at our last race at Unadilla. We'll see if Fast Freddy, the speed, can keep it going today. Fly Racing 32nd card is up. Again, in Moto 1, Eli Tomac, a great race, wins it. Chase Sexton, two crashes, struggles, gives the points lead up. Can he bounce back? Big race coming your way right here on Map TV. McElrath leads him into the first turn. He did that in Moto 1, goes a little wide. Is it going to be Savachi? Yes, Kawasaki man up front, Joey Savachi, and his teammate Jason Anderson with him. Yeah, it looks like RD's right there, like Ken Roxon's right there. So I don't know where Chase is. Dunge! Uh oh, uh oh, the boy had his coffee in between motos. He's hyped. Wow, Ryan Dungey overhauling both Kawasaki riders to get up front oh. on the Red Bull KTM. But yes, we don't see either. Sexton or Tomac up front right now. That's awesome. I think you're going to see these guys ultra aggressive in the beginning part of the race. You know, Joey's upset. He holds shot and gets passed by the coffee man and the German chocolate. So let's see what happens. It's good to see Ryan up there, man. And the old first lap fast lap from Roxon is in effect today, blowing by guys, moving to second, and now putting pressure on Dungey for the lead. Yeah, I think we're just going to try to see if Ryan can hold this lead for a little bit. I mean, the last time he had the lead was up in Mount Morris, and those guys got around him pretty quick. Seems like things were starting to happen to him. So I think it would be key for him to just hold on to it and let this race settle down. And um, the only way you're going to know is to be up front. So we'll see what happens. He can hold Roxon off early in a race. You're doing something right because he is lethal on the early laps. Savachi and Anderson file through third and fourth. Sexton is actually next fifth. And 13th is Tomac. So the ties in turn. So mm -hmm. I think Chase's opportunity, I'll be interested to see what happened off the start with Eli, but the opportunity is there for him to capitalize on that. And I think Roxon, uh, you know, he's trying to get around Dungey, but also Dungey knows his moment, like his MO. If you can hold Ken for a little bit, you have a good chance of trying to hold him off for a, a while. So let's see how long Dungey can do that for. And I was mentioning this in the first moto. I mean, this 450 pack is deep right now. So you get a bad start. It's that much harder to come through. Oh, there's Roxon on the inside. Dungey left it open. Roxon uh -huh. has got the spot. No, oh. Dungey going to fight back. Come on. Oh. Dungey, you gotta stay up. But Roxon's got the inside down here. Let's see if he just shuts him down. Dungey's going to be perfect around the outside. Yeah. He's going to have the inside of the next corner coming right back. Let's Look at the aggression. Out of retirement and back to the lead. Yeah, Roxon, I thought he'd be able to square it up on him, but that's the fight back from Dungey. That's awesome. Now, Intensity Roxon, is there. Yeah, Roxon might try to squirt past him on the outside right here. If he can get the run, he should be on the inside right here. But Whoa. then he closes him off. Dunch has it covered. Now Roxon fights back again. Drag race up the hill. Yep. 
Now, Ken's going to have to funnel back in. This is one of those t parts of the track. You have to, it's better to funnel back in and just regroup and try to pass him back. But, man, RD, he's, he's getting that fight to him. And this is what I said about being able to hold Ken off for a little bit. Yeah, well, Dungey fourth in the first moto. If he has a good performance in this second moto, he could be on that overall podium today, which has been the goal all year. Roxon going back to work on him. Got Anderson in third right oh, here. Oh, yeah. Looks like his teammate. Then uh, maybe Chase. Sexton still not up on the rear fenders of the Kawasaki teammates. He is fifth, but there, see the gap he's got to make up. Tomac has climbed to 10th after yeah. starting 13th. And Chase has been, I wonder if that first moto has kind of started him a little bit, not to like override the track, because normally he's been able to close in on these guys. He's been very aggressive. And there is Tomac in that high-vis gear. That is the gap. But it's really not just about the gap as far as time, it's track position. How many bikes between them? How many points would that be? And how quickly could Tomac make that up? Yeah, Eli knows the same thing as Chase. He, sometimes you're paying attention. I'm sure Eli's paying attention to where Chase is and seeing if he's pulling away, how much his positions are moving. And as long as Chase ain't pulling away, it gives Eli some confidence to be able to just slowly, methodically make his way back up there. Yeah, this intensity of Dungey to hold off Roxon, who's blazing fast early, means that Sexton's not making up any ground on the race leaders in these first two laps. Roxon giving it another, another attack. Yeah, I think the important thing with Dungey right now, and he realizes that if you can hold Ken off, it, it just calms down the race, and it's not like you're going slow. Ken's so fast, and uh, but Ryan's holding his own. They're pulling away from Jason a little bit, and you wouldn't believe how much confidence this is giving Ryan, because I think he believes he's pretty strong at the end of the motos, so his beginning part of the race has been his, his issue his whole career. So for him to do this, he's hyped. These fans would be absolutely ecstatic if Dunge could put it on the podium today or win this moto. And if he wins the moto, he'd be on the podium. So they'd be happy either way. Can he get it done? Anderson starting to sneak into the picture. Roxon looking to make a power move around the outside. Yep. Tripling downhill and takes the lead. Yeah, you can see that coming. Roxon was setting that corner up. He, he knew he was pretty quick all there on the outside, and Dungey kind of blew that corner out. But, you know, Kim does what he does best, and he gets out front, especially in these early in the second moto, first moto. So let's see what he can do right here. Wow, Dungey did all he could to weather that storm, but not enough. Roxon able to take it from him. And now Anderson has put it together. Sexton has moved to fourth around Savachi. This is great racing. All five riders in the same section of racetrack. Now what I'm, if Chase gets up and he gets around, um, you know, Anderson and those guys, you'll start seeing that urgency from Eli, even though he just got around the uh, other guys. I think he still sees that gap get, um, pulling away from um, Chase. So we'll see what happens with Eli in a minute. He just got around Norin, and he's working on Plessinger right now. Again, the Hive is the lime green gear of Tomac. And we go back to this battle. Anderson sends it around the outside. Yeah, Jason's been riding good all day long, so that's good to see him. And I'm assuming if he gets up on Ken, I think he's going to try to make an attack. And I think it'll be the first time since maybe Hangtown. Jason's been up in the lead or close to the lead like that. So I think he sees all these guys smell an opportunity knowing that Eli's not there right now and Chase is, they're all behind him. So I wouldn't be surprised if Jason makes this pass quickly and aggressively. I got it wrong. They didn't switch gear for the first photo. Tomac's still running the orange gear. That was oh. actually the high vis on the Yamaha is Craig. Tomac got around him. Now you see Tomac in the battle box. That is for seventh place. Jason out. Oh, oh, he's had two moments right here. El Hombre, come on, calm down, baby. Now, it looks like to me that those sections got done here, James. Sorry to cut you off, but he's got to make moves, and he does. Yeah, see, that's the part where I was saying Dungy might be in between that retired mode. I think if it was anybody else, he would push Chase. But luckily for Chase, I don't know how many people, maybe outside of Barsha and Anderson, what, what raced. Um, chase that hard knowing that he's in the title fight with Eli but Eli is coming and I think he's starting to sense that now he's looking at Chase get around these guys so Beast Mode's gonna have to come out for this moto. Sexton desperately needs to put points on the board here he's got to win this moto and he's got to have riders finish between himself and Tomac it's a tall order because they have primarily been one two oh ho, ho, Sexton overcooked that corner yeah it's weird to see Chase make some odd mistakes like this and, and not like his normal like you know, every once in a while you have some moments, but when you start seeing a guy like over jumping and, and blowing some of these corners out, to me, like, it might be a point he might be riding backwards in the sense. And what I mean by that, 
I think he might be looking back and seeing where Eli is instead of racing forward. And when you start doing that, he's not focusing on what you're doing. And maybe it looks a little like that in the beginning. But here comes Jason. Oh, Anderson doesn't care at all about that title fight. He's here to win today. And he wants to go for the lead. And he'd have the overall if it ended like this. Man, he handled that lead. Big landing, hard landing, shrugged it off. Yeah, now Jason's starting to set uh, Ken up right here. So if he gets close to him. Oh, and he just did. There it is. That was easier than I thought it would be. Roxon been good on this inside. Not enough. Wow, Anderson to the lead. Well, I think Anderson was making that happen. And if you saw the difference, what Ken, how he rode against Dungy right there and Jason, that's the separation. That's like the intensity level, what Jason has and um, compared to like Dungy. And that's the difference why Jason's out front. So still early in the race, but you can definitely tell Jason's moving forward. You can't do that. Anderson is tired of being the third place guy behind Tomac and Sexton. He has put his best foot forward today. A really good run in Moto1 to finish second and getting the early lead here in Moto2. And we have not seen Anderson up front early in the motos much this year. So this is a bit of a breakthrough. And now he wants to break away. Yeah, as far as the points, while and, and for us, it's perfect to have Jason up here because I believe he is the one guy that don't really care about none of these other guys mm -hmm. that he will race them. So even if Eli and Chase gets up there, they will have to race him differently than anybody else on the track. I don't think Jason cares about the championship. So it's going to be cool to watch this and see how closely, um, you know, how these guys end up reacting for the rest of the race. Or Beta Motorcycles drone cam. That's Tomac at the bottom of the screen and a knockdown drag out battle between Savachi and Plessinger. They are scrapping and Tomac is closing. Yeah, it's important for Eli to get around Aaron and, and these guys pretty quick so he doesn't lose too much time. But also, Tomac understands that he just got a big points gap in that first uh, moto. So as much as he wants to close up the chase, he understands that, hey, the last few races, it's been five points, one point. So I think anything coming out with a red plate to Eli is going to be happy. So he might not push compared to like if he was still down how he would. But we'll see. We're only 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes left on this thing. So it's a lot, lot of racing left. Plessinger working that left side, looking to set something up on Savachi. It's the Red Bull KTM against the Monster Kawasaki, and it's two Hondas duking it out for a second. Sexton and Roxon. you got to imagine Roxon's not going to play it too aggressive with his teammate. Yeah, he's been like that. You would think that. No, but he just fought him off. Yeah, Roxon's been doing that all year. Every time he's gotten around, like, chasing, and this is critical for Chase because he's actually gotten frustrated a few times around Roxon this year. Um, you thinking that, you know, Ken would let him by. So wouldn't be surprised me if Ken probably should move over, but Chase is, uh, he'll move, move or be hit, one or the other. So <laughs> move or be moved. Sexton up to second, and you can still see Anderson up ahead. So not too much damage done. Sexton has every opportunity to go out here and get this moto win that he needs, but Anderson is going to be one tough. El Hombre to deal with. El Hombre, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now with Chase, I think if he's going to have a chance to get around uh, Jason without having to race him, I think he has to make the move. Once he gets him, he has to make that move pretty quick and try to get a gap. And obviously he's closer to him, so he's faster. But Chase does ride a little different around Jason than he does other people. So does everybody around Jason. And, um, you know, I think Chase sees that opportunity and maybe try to get his max points as he can. You're watching the two contenders, Sexton in second on the upper left. Thor battle box is Tomac on the lower right, closing in on that Savachi and Plessinger battle. He is in seventh place right now. Yeah, Eli's not making much time up on these guys, which is kind of surprising. So I think that can be a little bit of like having a little bit of points in your, your back pocket. And maybe Eli knows that likelihood of him catch and chase this moto might be out so he might just be more concentrated on at least getting up and finishing behind chase at the end of the day or at worst getting third if chase wins so Eli's not really in too much of a rush right now from what it looks like he's inching up on Plessinger right now if it ended like this although you got a feeling that a lot's going to transpire it would be a two-point lead for Tomac so it would still be anyone's title Oh, going into the last four motos. What Sexton can gain is three more, but he's got to get Anderson to do it, and that's not going to be easy. Yeah, that would be a, a big day if somehow Chase can come out here still with the points lead and what's not. But I think the action for Eli, he's probably letting this thing get in 15 minutes. I'm assuming you're going to start seeing somewhat of a charge for him. Well, that's the Tomac specialty, those beast mode charges, and it is pretty humid today, so it is going to be a physical test. And he's closing again on Plessinger. 
Still right there with Savachi, and then it's Dungy next up. Yeah, we've seen Tomac a, a lot of times this year. It almost looked like he's, you know, how he looks in the beginning part of this race. Like he catches those guys and he stays there, and then all of a sudden he picks, he puts on this uh, big push for it. So to me, he looks really relaxed compared to like, okay, it's a sighting. You got you're losing points. You got this opportunity to get up and uh, you know get a big points gap on Chase. He looks really relaxed. So it might be just that he's feeling good and not, the way he looked at first moto and how he has an all day in practice. He might just be setting up on these guys. So one of two things is going to happen. Either he's going to move his way up here and, and run down Chase, or he's just going to let these guys get tired and just kind of finish off behind him. But I think we're going to see uh, Eli move his way up through these guys pretty soon. And Sexton has caught Anderson. Only a few bike lengths in it now. Roxon hanging tough in third. Now, Chase was right up on Jason the last lap up here, and then you saw he got to a certain point and Jason pulled away. Jason has a really good line right there where he's doubling um, through that section. And what that's doing is carrying his momentum, as you can see how much time he's lost. And he's also saving a lot of energy by doing that because he's having one less jump. So I got to give El Hombre credit. He's doing a lot of, I would say, Ken Rocks and uh, Chase X and technical things around this track that is allowing him to uh, make some time up and save some energy on these guys. Tomac's going to try an outside line to get Plessinger here. And he's got it. There he goes. Set that up a long way going into it at the top of the hill. And they completed it at the bottom. So that is six for Tomac. That would be one more point of the championship. Plessinger tries to fight back. No dice. Yeah. Now, Tomac's look like he's starting to get aggressive. Next one on the list is, um, you know, Sabachi and then RD5 Coffee. So we'll see how, how quickly and how quick um, Tomac can make his pass on those. Just here, Dylan Ferrandez has crashed. He's now back up under his own power, but might be headed back to the pits. Back to this battle for the lead. Sexton is all over Anderson now. Yeah, Chase, Chase sees the opportunity with Jason. And, you know, some people you can just, you know, make your way around them. Jason is one of those guys you got to pick your way around. So when Chase passes him, he's probably going to try to pass him in the spot where Jason can't get around him again so he doesn't leave the door open. Because as I said in the beginning, I know he has respect, but Jason wants to win. And he has a chance to win this thing right now. So we'll see what happens. Oh, down to the inside. There he goes. Right there. There it is. Yeah. That was a good pass by Chase. Now, let's see if he get a little gap. Wow. Make sure. yep. Well, that's what you're saying. Don't get into a duel with him. He just immediately went for it. Yeah, the thing is with Jason, if you let him hang around, then he's going to he's gonna fight you back. But if you can get back and uh, what Chase just did, then I don't think Jason will um, actually attack him and try to you know be aggressive with him. But if you let him stay there, then it's all bets off. It's for overall. We're halfway through, 15 minutes to go. In 15 minutes, you can save 15% or more on your insurance with a 15-minute phone call to GEICO. So, wow, has Chase Sexton changed the narrative of the day here? He had to, I mean had to, come up big in this second moto, and he has done it. There's Ferrandis, we heard out a crash, and I think his moto and his day is over. Yeah. Now, if I'm, if for everybody standing at home, I would pay attention. Let's see what Eli does these next couple laps, because that's going to tell, tell on how his outlook is for this championship and what he's trying to accomplish this next moto. If he starts catching these next guys and starts putting on an attack, then that, to me, he's racing forward. If not, then if he's doing what he's doing, then he's going to sit back and kind of let these guys wear out. And I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't caught Joey and, and Dungey, considering that right now the points, the chase is in the lead again. So. We'll see what happens, but it's already at the halfway, and that was strange. Yeah, over jump that? Yeah, that was weird right there. Tomac in sixth. Savachi would be next on his list. The big difference is he's almost 10 seconds down on Sexton. So it's Sexton, he's just got to hold on, and he'll get some of those points back that he lost in the first moto when he finished seventh. Lost 11 points to Tomac in that one. And we'll update the championship points right now. They would actually be tied right now. <laughs> Didn't think it could get much closer than it was to one point coming in. Yeah. But you know there's plenty of time for Tomac to get a few points back. Starting with Savachi here. Can he get it done? Now, I'm paying attention to Eli right now. And what I noticed, it looks like he's sliding around a little bit more than he did the first moto. And I don't know if he still has that paddle tire on there, but this is the time of the day and a part of the track where if it's going to be the worst, it would be right now. And kind of looks like he's sliding around. So Tomac might be a little uncomfortable because now he has to stay in the ruts and berms. 
Well, and JT reporting he does have that paddle tire on. Yeah, it looks like so. Certain parts of the track, it looks like Eli's definitely uncomfortable, kind of like he did last weekend at uh, Unadilla. Oh, we now hear Sexton has gone down. See exactly where they are on track. Well, Tomac hasn't gotten to him, we know that. Yeah, I thought I heard the crowd go a little wild. So, obviously, for Anderson, Chase, that's and Roxon. Yep. Yeah, Anderson's leading at Roxon, and it's been the second, third time today Chase has made a mistake. So, that's definitely frustrating for him. But the good thing is, if he can keep his calm, he's still in front of Eli. So, all ain't lost right now. It's just going to make more work. Wow, so a rematch. He's got to get Roxon and Anderson again. Yeah, I heard the crowd. Saw one of the flaggers moving around there. So just as quickly as it had fallen back into Sexton's favor, he has to go back to work. High drama here at Bud's Creek. Stretch run on Lucas Oil promote across. It's all the line. Sexton looking to make a move. Oh, uh, yeah, Ken. Uh, now he's going to lose some time right here. This is one of those one-line uh, sections. And I wouldn't be surprised if Chase actually rides him really aggressive right here since Ken ain't getting out of his way. Yeah, that's a one-line corner, and Roxon just held his ground, not making it easier on his teammate at all. Now, you don't have to. It's certainly not required. It's every man for himself out here. It's a little surprising to see, though. And Roxon's riding well. Look at this. He's got Anderson right in his sights. Yeah, Ken's out there on his own, and he has a podium, and the lead's right in front of him, so he's definitely not going to roll over. But, you know, you could tell Chase, he knows, like, what the... What oh, the Anderson is stalled! Yeah, Jason stalled that thing, and... Oh, man, that's frustrating. What's going on today? Look at this battle. Three wide at the top of that hill. Anderson gets Sexton back. Now, you see what Chase did right there? I think he went outside because it is Jason. Like, he was afraid that El Humbre might be a little Whoa, aggressive. Oh, he muscled him. Oh, yeah. Boy, get out the way. So, <laughs> Chase knows what's on the line right now. So, you're thinking he approaches Anderson a little different. We know how aggressive Anderson is. Oh, absolutely. I mean... The, the thing with these guys, everybody's so close, and the part with Jason, what helps him is, and what hurts him at the same time, is the way he races and how aggressive he is. And well, Chase just jumped out of that berm. Chase had the line, he jumped out. So 100%, Chase rides different around Jason um, than he does everybody else, and, and he should. Jason is aggressive, but um, it, 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 makes it makes it for good racing. But I think Chase, again, he's he's going to get rocks and just he's going to have to make the move on Ken because Ken's now in the lead. He has the smells and overall for Ken, so I think it's going to be important to see what happens with Chase and him. Yeah, if you're if you're back there saying, why wouldn't he help his teammate? Well, look at how it's all paid off by holding off Sexton and taking advantage of the mistake by Anderson. Roxon's back to the overall lead. How long can he hold it? Sexton's right there. Beautiful job finding traction at the top of the off camber. Sexton back to the lead. Yeah, he had no opportunity. That would have been blatant right there if you would have cut him off. So, yeah, Ken's in a tough position because at one point, I think he was an overall. Um, he was right there yeah, until that pass. So, Chase, it just erased, erased a little bit of what just happened. And I don't know what's up with Eli. Yeah, well, Eli's not coming through. He's not even gaining that much on Savachi. There they are. See the... Uh, Blue and white gear of Savachi and the green motorcycle. This is, we have the Sexton crash. Getting up. Yeah, I'm assuming he just went in and lost the front end. Maybe he got his foot clock, uh, caught on one of the inside rut. It is a deep rut right there, a little tip over, but you know, it just made more work for himself. And Man, Roxon riding much, much better today, but look how close it is. The next group is right there. The Dungy and Savachi group. Unbelievable. You go back five seconds to fifth place in this moto. Sexton is going to have to hustle to hold the win today. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Unbelievable racing here. Second 450 moto of the day at Bud's Creek, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. You're watching Joey Savacci, Ken Roxon, Ryan Dungey, Eli Tomac, you, you name it. Everybody that has been a player this season in this championship is all battling together to ETS drone camera. Sexton 
starting to pull away now. Second time in this moto he's led. He led, fell, went back to third, retook it. Now let's give you the order. Anderson just got around Ken Roxon while we were at commercial break. Let's put the Monster Cowie in the second. There's Roxon in third. Yeah, now Eli's right on Denji, so I'm gonna, he's probably going to try to make that pass on him. But Eli kind of missed an opportunity a little bit to, when those guys were battling each other to be able to close up and get around and slide past. But I think Eli looks like he's struggling, like I said earlier, with traction, and it's probably making him the making passes and being aggressive a little bit more difficult. I mean, he's definitely trying, and I know he senses the opportunity of, of closing down some points, and, but we'll see. Meanwhile, with all this talk about all the passing and the action in the championship, by the way, yeah, it'd be a one-point gap. Tomac over Sexton if it ended like this. Tomac trying to get Dungey and pick up two more points. But Anderson is looking at today's overall win, be the second one of the year if it ends like this. Tomac needs to gain two positions to take the overall away from Anderson. Listen to this crowd. This is what they wanted to see. Championship drama. Ryan Dungey fighting for podium real estate. Yeah, it's everything you want. Yeah, Ryan's been Ryan good all day, so he's not going to be a pushover for Eli. And you know Ryan's decided to be up here battling with these guys. This is all he wanted. So you can definitely tell with Eli, especially where that Anderson uh, passed Barsha, I mean, excuse me, Anderson passed Roxon at, he was able to cut down and, and get on the gas. Where if you watch Tomac right there, he had to stay up in the berm. And that's why I keep saying I think he's struggling with tire setup. And what that does, it makes it difficult for him to be able to, once he catches Ryan, to be able to square up and, and make a pass on him. So he has to do the outside and just stay in the, the berm and hopefully just speed around, um, you know, RD or whoever around. So See how he plays it. Dungey is fourth. Tomac is fifth. Up ahead is Roxon third. Anderson looking for the win with it. 2-2 two, two moto scores. But Sexton doesn't care about the overall. It's each individual points-paying Moto that matters to him. And he's rectifying the wrongs of Moto 1 by leading here in Moto 2. Yeah, Eli's definitely closed up on uh, Ryan right now. So if he's going to try to get around him, I'm assuming it'd probably be right here. Maybe if he gets close enough, he can get down on the inside of that finish line after the finish line. But RD's holding his own. He's not close enough right now. Dungey's fighting him off as best he can. And it's hard right here as the, the day gets worn on. Those shadows start becoming an issue right there. Right after the finish line, you drop in that dip. Eli almost had a moment right there, too. So you got to give Joey credit, too. Joey's staying yeah. right next to him. So he's riding really good. Yeah, still only nine seconds between our top six. Unbelievable close racing today. Tomac, another shot at it. Let's see what he does. He probably tried to square him up. and. If Tomac can get around Rock, uh, Ryan before they get up in his S's, he might, he'll keep Ken in sight, but Ryan's Ryan just good enough where he can't get close enough to him unless uh, Ryan makes a mistake, and I know that's frustrating with Eli with two minutes left. Time ticking away. Oh, Dungey held by the lap rider. Able to get through. Oh, and it actually held up Tomac worse. Yep. And Tabachi's right back to him. Man, this race has been pretty good. Eli's going to have to regroup and go after Dungey again. Boom. So critical. Every point is going to count. There are two points. That is the differential between Tomac getting the Dungey. And furthermore, he lost a lot more ground to Roxon as well. Yeah, let's see what Eli. He's been pretty quick here all day long. So let's see if he can close back in on Dungey. And he, he has to make a pass. Because I think if he gets around Dungey really quick, the opportunity to go in and catch him rocks in would be just as big. That's four-point swing right there. I cannot believe how deep, how tough this field is. Rarely at the end of the year do you have this many good, healthy factory riders this motivated. But it's the case in 22. That made it tough on Sexton to come through in Moto 1. It's a lot tougher on Tomac right now. Savachi's been tough. Roxon rejuvenated today, and Dungey's not handing anything to Tomac either. Yeah, it's the way the track's set up. I mean, it, I think it neutralizes a lot of guys' speed. You can catch a guy, but a passing is a whole different thing, and that's why you see the guys close up to him. But, you know, this is championship. The way Chase has been riding, and for him to be able to recover like he did the second moto, that says a lot. So every point, if I'm Eli Tomac, I'm trying to get as many points as I can, especially with Paul and the, and the wind and how next weekend is. So... But Dungey's pulling away. Dungey's holding his own, and Eli's going to have to get aggressive with him. 
Now, I've heard a mention that you've not seen Tomac go for tear-offs in the last couple of laps. He might have run out. Just haven't seen it, at least. And he took a huge face fault at the top of the hill a couple of corners ago and didn't go for the tear-off. My boy RC knows about that. I roosted him back in 2007. <laughs> He's got my victory. He didn't have no tear-offs on that. So, yeah, there's Tomac sliding out again right there. So definitely struggling with some tire setup, but it don't matter. It's, it, you got to get it. You got to make it happen no matter what. So, Yeah, exactly. He has a one-point lead in the series. If it ends like this, he'd much rather have three than one. So he has everything in it to try to get Ryan Dungey for fourth place. And by the way, as the clock ticks off and Tomac cannot make passes, it looks better and better for a Jason Anderson overall win today with two two moto scores. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have two laps left. So Eli's going to have two laps to get around Dungey um, right here. Worst case scenario, if I'm Eli, I at least need to get Ryan right now. Digging deep, it's Eli Tomac. And Ryan Dungey is always strong late in the races, pre-retirement. Probably would have been during retirement in shape. And certainly right now, Sexton is gone. 2.6 seconds up on Anderson. Good bounce back. He needed it badly. He answered the call here in Moto2. Wow. Yeah. Tomac is not closing. No, he's not. Yeah, it looks like he just can't get on the gas quick enough to catch Ryan. And and um, that's all credit to Ryan. He's running good lines and is putting Tomac in a situation. But... You know, Tomac's going to have to make something special, and every time he does that, he just loses the rear end, and he just loses that time. So I know it's super frustrating to him because he's caught him, and he knows how valuable these points would be, but at the end of the day, he, he can't do anything. And You know, one of the things uh, you mentioned, that tire choice, is it gets closer. He alluded to earlier, you said how it affects the suspension, and that's what he's used to riding at home. Yeah, I think he, but if he's stuck with the paddle, which he has, it looks like he's just losing it. And what that does, it just, it takes the opportunity to be able to square down like Anderson did with yeah. Roxon and, and get on the gas. I mean, he can do it, but you see with Eli, he's not, he's not really aggressive on that. The only time Eli is aggressive is when he's in the ruts. And for him, he just lost it again. I know he's frustrated and it, it definitely looks like he's maybe struggling a little bit with you know suspension but i would just say that's more of the the tires spinning up more than anything and what i'm saying is he says he's more comfortable with the suspension setup because he's used to where that tire feels so he'll maybe run the scoop even in not the best conditions for it because that's the feel he's used to yeah I, I agree with that and i think what what tomac is so he is he is definitely you know sacrificing something now whether that's with suspension or traction it's you can tell there's a big visual difference this yeah. moto and as this track's going on because usually it gets rough eli gets stronger it's definitely like it's not any better for him and i just see him every time he tries to make a move on ryan he just puts him in a situation and he's just spinning up so and if he doesn't watch out joey gonna get him i there. know and by the way dungey's closing on rocks and unbelievable how close it is today with this group because Sexton and Tomac had been dominant the last couple of weeks. Savacci's trying to make the pass on Tomac. You know, all the momentum Tomac made up in that first moto, if Joey were to get him back, it'd be a wash. I almost feel like it'd be worse than like Sexton just going 1-1 one -one because this was a big opportunity for Eli to close in. And they've been first and second pretty much all year long. So when you look back as a racer, you're thinking, Believe me, Tomac's going to be thinking during the week, man, I lost an opportunity to maybe seize a big gap on this. And sometimes that's almost worse than actually having a guy just beat you straight up and you get second like last weekend because you're thinking about what if. And so we'll find out. Let's see. I think Tomac might have another shot at, um, you know, Dungey, but I know Eli's going to be frustrated after this moto, even if he comes away with the points lead, about what if could have happened. Half a lap to go. Chase Sexton. Looking to answer back with a Moto2 win. Jason Anderson looking for his second overall win of the year. And shout out to the supporting cast, the likes of Anderson, Roxon, Dungey in there to make today interesting. They made it tough on Sexton in Moto1. They made it tough on Tomac in Moto2, keeping this championship close with four motos to go. Certainly not the day Sexton wanted, but he was able to survive. Yeah, you got to give Roxon a shout out too. He's been struggling at the end of the motos and yep. both motos. So for him to be still right here, I think everybody outside of, you know, Eli and, and Chase probably are pumped the way the day is going. But you got to give Chase credit when this title look 
pretty bleak at one moment. You had beast mode out and he was losing 13 points. That could have that could have flipped. So for him to come back and hopefully if you can close his moto off and win this thing and then what's going on with Eli, don't don't be uh it's a big shock to the system, and I, I think it only makes it more interesting the next couple of races. So Sexton working on the Moto win, and how about this? Chase and Anderson, that seemed like a distant memory, that win at round two at Hangtown a couple of months ago, but he's looking to get it back today. So Sexton needed a Moto win, he gets the Moto win. But here is Jason Anderson, who's gonna take the 2-2 two -two scores to the overall here at Bud's Creek. El Hombre with a neck burn. And Dungey does it, Roxon and Dungey hold off Tomac to the end. This 450 class is tough, and they were not going to let Tomac and Sexton own them today. They held them back in the two different motos, and that keeps the championship interesting. There is Anderson. He wow. wanted the progress, and he got it. Progressed all the way to the top. Yeah, they hot. They hot time. Congratulations, Jason. Yeah, that was a good race. That was an intense battle from first to, like, six right there. You got to give them all credit even joey holding on with eli and then um ryan being as strong as he has so wow that was a good race some of the best late season ra season racing we've seen to have two riders duke it out for a championship that's happened many times but to have this many riders in the mix today and that determination was rewarded a victory for el hombre jason anderson takes it The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. Okay, so here. Welcome back to Bud Creek, Maryland. I'm with your overall winner, Jason Anderson. You've been complaining about those third places. You did something about it today. 2-2 two, two gets it done today. Yeah, today 2 plus 2 equals 1, and uh, I'll take it any way I can get it. Like I said, progress, and I feel like today was a step in the right direction, and um, I always like Bud's Creek, and I was a little nervous this morning. My practice wasn't that good, but I uh, was able to make some changes, bring it around, and, uh, you know, really excited, and I want to thank the uh, whole Race Kawasaki Monster um, team and uh, Alpine Star, Arrow, Scott Goggles, um, my trainer Brock, uh, my mechanic Rango, it's his birthday today, um, my wife and my family at home. So um, let's keep it going and uh, see if we can end this thing strong. Jason Anderson with his second ever 450 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross win today at Bud's Creek. And also he had the fastest lap of the moto, faster than the moto winner Sexton. So it wasn't just by default, he had the speed to get it done today. Impressive ride. El Hombre got it done show you how he did it with the uh, Lucas Oil race recap. Now the first Moto Anderson finished second, just keep that in mind. Early on, Ryan Dungey and Ken Roxon, great battle. It was like 2014 all over again. <laughs> this guy's a battle and uh, Roxon rode good all day. You got to give him credit. Same thing with Ryan, but at the end of the day, it was El Hombre moving through the pack and, and trying to make things happen. And, and he did. He got around Ken and he tried to set forth and try to pull away, but we had another number 23 was coming. Yeah, Chase Sexton absolutely had to win this moto after a struggle in Moto 1. There's the big quick pass. Yeah, Chase made an aggressive uh, pass on Jason. He knew, and probably a good thing uh, Jason knew he had the overall, but then Chase fell over and then made start this whole thing over, which was great for us in here. We just got to call the same thing over again. But yep. Chase got back up and made his pass back on his teammate and went back out there, Jason, again, and, and got it done. Roxanne maybe did make it a little easier on Sexton that time around. And then here's Anderson, just beautiful job. Yeah, that's where I was saying I think the difference between Jason and um, Eli, it was being able to do that. And I don't know, Jason was making passes like that all day long. He was super aggressive, and, and he was able to get the job done. And But this was the man of the day, the second moto, after regrouping. He did, and he only loses two points on the day to Tomac on a day where he crashed twice and was way back in Moto 1. There's Anderson taking second in this Moto. Two two scores are enough to win the overall. There's the Moto results. Uh, Tomac's ended up second overall. Roxon third overall. Sexton fourth. If we unpack it all, send it back to the podium with JT. Eli Tomac second overall. Now it looked like the start may have been a, you know the culprit there. Really tough to pass that second moto. But if you're looking for a silver lining, you do get the red plate back, and we move on to Ironman. 
yeah, it, uh, that, that's, that's what it was, was a bad start there. And uh, not making the moves as, as early as I did, even in Moto 1, even behind guys. So uh, that's, that's where I needed to be better, was the start. Uh, everyone was riding good in front of me, did what I could. Like I said, looking at the positive, got one up on the day overall now, so uh, carry on. Well, you can tell he's a little bit dejected, but he is your new points leader. Yeah, I think that says a lot right there, you know, by his face and stuff. He, like, he's a little disappointed, and the biggest thing for him is not going to dwell on the week about what if, because there was a big opportunity, and I know he's frustrated. There was something going on holding the beast mode back, and he felt good all day long, but he couldn't get it done, and, and that's frustrating. That's what you saw in his face. Yeah, we didn't see the usual Tomac charge through the traffic, but the 1-5 is still good enough for second overall. Most importantly, the right column. He scored 41 points today, Sexton 39, and that's what allows him to take the points lead back. Ken Roxon's on the podium as well. Let's go back to JT. Well, Ken Roxon, back to form today. That was hard fought. It, it's hot out here. I mean, you were fighting literally the entire moto, just different guys it seemed like the entire time. Yeah, um, we're trying. You know, I, I'm super excited to be back on the podium. You know, you seem to take these for granted, but um, what was crazy was I was one spot away from first, so it was uh, it was a hard battle this whole second moto. So I was super excited. I stayed in it, and um, pumped for my team too. You know, it's been a little bit of a drought, but we're back on the box, and uh, that's a step in the right direction. We're going to continue and hopefully finish out strong in these next couple of rounds. But had to feel nice for one of the hottest days of the year for Ken Roxon up on the podium. Yeah, showing some endurance there. They battled as you said, JT, the entire time, and he did not wilt, and ends up going three three. And these are the standings. It's still one point. Yeah, just like, flipped. We just did a graphic thing. Just rewind it a little bit. But <laughs> yeah, I think for Eli Tomac, you know, and, and Chase, I, I almost feel like Chase still is walking out of this with the momentum. You know, even though he had that tough first moto, I just think Eli just sees an opportunity at loss right here, and especially that second moto. But at the end of the day, he has the points. He took the main part back, and if it ended today, he'd be the points leader. But we'll see what happens. He's got to come back out next week. Oh yeah, we're down to four motos to go. Let's go back to the podium. Chase Sexton fighting through adversity. That was a heck of a comeback. I know you had to be really pissed off after that first moto. You even crash in the second moto and still get it done. That was a great bounce back ride. Man, today was uh, not my day. Um, <clears throat> even from practice, I never felt that good. And just too many mistakes. Uh, first moto hit neutral, went over the bars in that corner, <clears throat> and then ran into another rider and had my work cut out for me. So. Had a big effort in the first moto and uh, knew I had to bounce back and get a max point second moto and um, got it done. I fell over, still knew I could win and I just uh, was kept fighting. Um, you don't win championships on your good days, it's your bad days you win them. So uh, if we can uh, manage the points and uh, come back next weekend strong and ride a lot better, we'll be in a good spot. Well, Chase Sexton may have red lost the red plate today, but he certainly held on to that confidence. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's kind of the way you were seeing it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you could just listen. If you put him and Tomac, the last two interviews, what Tomac last weekend and how Chase is talking, you could tell the difference on what Chase is believing and what Tomac is, and it's definitely frustrating. It's going to be hard for Tomac to, to regroup, but three-time champion. He is the beast mode, and he's got to come back out and get it done. Motosport.com, whole shot replay. It's all Kawasaki's here. It's amazing how much this start, and I said in practice it was critical, but it really came to fruition this week how the guys got got up front, dictated the race, and with Eli, he said he didn't get a start. That's what happened at second moto, and then the second, first moto he did, and then you saw. So I think it's important. It was good racing, and man, the boys, I know they tired, and some frustrated, some are happy, but at the end of the day, they're all safe, and we get to go racing next weekend again. Well, that's what we like to see. We didn't have all the answers coming into today's racing and we still don't going into next weekend, which will be Ironman. Got to watch Fast Lap qualifying at 10 a.m. Eastern on MAV TV, and then four straight hours of racing coverage starting at 1 o'clock. Still one point in it in the 450 division. James has been involved in some great moments in the sport, but a one-point gap with four motos to go. This is all time what we're seeing right now as far as this battle. Oh, man, this is cool to see. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad I ain't racing it. <laughs> I get to get back and, and watch and analyze these guys and been there, done that, and I'm happy for Jason. He's, he's been fighting. It's nice to see guys that continue never to give up, and he's got that victory. So, yeah. Bubba's World Podcast got some stuff to say this week? Yeah, I got a lot of things to say, <laughs> okay. but, man, it's uh, I said it a lot here. It's been fun, and 
We'll come back and get it. But yeah, you got to give it up to Jason and all these guys out here. Awesome to have you. James Stewart in the booth with us today for Jason Thomas. I'm Jason Wygant. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next weekend. Chase Sexton wins the moto. Eli Tomek a moto, but it's Jason Anderson on top at Bud's Creek. With the neck burn.